is meteorologist Mark Molnar with a special update on Hurricane Irma. Dangerous Category 5 Hurricane Irma here continues to spin north of Hispaniola, continuing on a course towards the west-northwest. It's targeting the Caicos, the Turks, and will continue to move towards the southern Bahamas over the next day or two. Looks to move right between Cuba and South Florida, and then that's when it will start to make that turn that hard right turn towards South Florida, Miami-Dade Miami -Dade County here area, and right up probably either right along the east coast of Florida or even slightly inward, inland, which would be a very dangerous situation. So, as I said before, St. Martin, St. Croix, U.S. and British Virgin Islands, Barbuda, and Antigua here, all devastated by this system. Let that be a lesson, as this system is not your run-of-the-mill hurricane. It is a Category 5, 175 mile per hour winds as of this evening, nine, right around 921, 922 millibars. This system is expanding its wind field, and by the time it reaches South Florida, we could have a system here that is six, seven, eight hundred miles in diameter here almost. If you take all the tropical storm force winds and the feeder bands, this system's really going to enhance and blow up as it continues to move across the area. Now there's a steady weakening trend here as you can see on the track, but don't let that fool you because this system will continue to expand, it'll have eyewall replacement cycles, and you will also get into some warmer waters here off the coast of South Florida and the Bahamas. This system's been traveling across water that's 84, 85 degrees. The system's going to be traveling into 88, 89, and in some cases, 90 degree temperatures. So, as I said before, this system is extremely dangerous. I cannot stress enough. If you are in South Florida, especially Miami, or in the, those low-lying areas, you're going to want to consider evacuations across the whole eastern side of Florida here. Now, if you look at the track, this thing could reemerge. If it does make landfall, which we're starting to think because the solutions are bending a little bit further towards the west again, the arrow's been really spot on with targeting South Florida here in Miami-Dade County. If this system heads right up, makes landfall near Miami, which is the worst case scenario, this would be a lot of destruction. It'd be on the eastern and northeastern side of the eye wall. The system could reemerge regardless of whether it stays off the coast of Florida or heads inland a little bit and make a second landfall here either near Savannah, Georgia, between Savannah and Myrtle Beach. So this could make landfall up here is probably a category three system, which is still a major hurricane classification. So by any stretch of the imagination, there could be two major landfalls out of this system. The first major one being near Miami and the second one being up towards Georgia, South Carolina area. And then all along the eastern side, the eastern side of the system is always the worst side of the hurricane. That's where all the feeder bands are feeding into. And you got all that forward momentum combined with the wind, creating a lot of damage across the area. I'm going to get into some mechanics as to explain why this hard right turn will occur with major hurricane Irma. But as I said, I cannot stress enough, this system is on a war path. It's like a buzz saw. And I'll show you in the satellite picture how symmetrical it really is. So places like Miami, up to Melbourne, Jacksonville, Savannah, and up to Myrtle Beach need to be really be watching this system because any slight deviations in track could mean a very large difference in what wind speeds and storm surge you get. But at right now, the way the models are looking, the GFS is slowly coming into play with the Euro solution here, which is probably one of the worst case scenarios we've seen in quite a long time. So stay tuned here, things could change slightly, but we're gonna fine tune it here. Take a look at the factors, subtropical high building in across parts of Eastern North America over the weekend. We got this subtropical high over Bermuda. It's gonna find a weakness between these two. We also have a stationary front draped across Northern Florida and the Carolinas. That will be the focal point and will help to magnify those rainfall totals here across the southeastern U.S. If that weren't enough, Hurricane Cadia is going into Mexico here and Hurricane Jose. It's going to become a major hurricane and once again, I hate to say this, it could be targeting the northeastern Caribbean islands with 120 to 130 mile per hour winds. It's a smaller system, but it's still going to add insult to injury here from places like St. Martin, 
these areas that have already been really devastated by this system. So continue to watch for this as this probably will be the next major system. As I said, hurricane watches have been expanded to Florida here, especially South Florida, all the Bahamas. And there is that area of warmer water off the coast of Florida in the Bahamas. I'm gonna get into that 87, 88 degree water. So yes, there will be some weakening, some interaction with Hispaniola, Dominican Republic and Hades mountains. All that down sloping flow feeding into the hurricane has helped disrupt the core just slightly. I should say ever so slightly because it's still a major category five storm. But nevertheless, as it gets away from Hispaniola and it gets into some warmer waters, this will help the storm hold its own. And as I said, it will probably make landfall in South Florida is a strong category four or even a low end category five. And low end and category five usually don't belong in the same sentence, but being that this storm has been so enormous and incredible with wind speeds of 185 miles an hour, if it does make landfall as a category five, it would be right around 160. It's more likely to make landfall right around 155 or 150. And as I said, the models are really kind of honing in towards Southeast Florida here. So you're gonna to wanna to continue to watch this because as I said, it's a very large diameter eye, but where that northern, northeastern and eastern eye wall makes landfall, if it does in South Florida, which is looking more likely, that would be where the tremendous damage occurs. And this could be the worst case scenario. Storm surge will be 15 to 25 feet, which would have been average up to 30 plus feet in those areas where it funnels into bays and waterways. So keep that in mind. Rainfall totals here across the Southeast are going to be staggering. Places like Florida, Eastern Georgia, South Carolina, even parts of North Carolina, will get in on the act of 10 to 20 inches of solid rain, especially from you divide the state down through the center and go to the eastern part of the state, Miami up to Melbourne, Jacksonville, Savannah, and up to Myrtle Beach. We could be looking at solid 10 to 20 with locally higher to 25 to 30 in those more persistent bands. And the system will start to slow down over the next several days. So this is not very good news. Let's get right into the pattern. As I said, this is the pattern that will affect this. Trough will slowly be kicking out of the Northeast. We'll have high pressure building in. And look at this for the Northeast. You will stay void of this system, which is very good news into your Friday. Take a look at this. Looking showers, another cold front, which will help to reinforce the chances that Irma will not head up this way, which is good. And temperatures will be breaking into the 60s, and the upper 50s across the region. And take a look at this for your Saturday. Look at this. Temperatures not looking too bad across the area. We're getting some sunshine across most of the area. Into your Sunday, looking like another stellar day across the Northeast. Temperatures starting to warm into the upper 60s and low 70s. And take a look at this for your Monday. Still looking very nice across the Northeast. So we're kind of keeping all that bad moisture to the South. In the five day outlook here, you can take a look at temperatures through the forecast period. We're starting to warm it up sunny all the way through the weekend. We'll have to get through some rain showers on Friday, but take a look at this. Through the weekend, we stay sunny and by Sunday and Monday, we warm it to near 70 degrees. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at Media Mark, subscribe to me on YouTube at Media Mark, comments, Twitter at WX Northeastern, Google Plus at Media Mark.